I would never accuse Rick of being conservative, but uh, but I would I I think he was maybe being conservative, frankly, in that call. Hey everyone, welcome to this TDR psychedelic exclusive. As we bring in a guest who's familiar with our podcast once again, Pey Peyton Nyquist from uh, Numinous, which trades on the TSX under the ticker symbol NUMI. Good to see you. How are how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good to see you. And uh, we were talking before we started recording here today, but uh, wow, you really get the uh, feeling that this industry, and we've talked about this uh, a lot in the last few interviews, but uh, I'm noticing a lot of momentum that's building over the last couple of weeks uh, pertaining to the industry. Don't you agree? Yeah, you know, as, as we've said, and, and it's always a, a hard or strange thing to talk about a little bit, but, you know, the need, unfortunately, continues to, to grow significantly. And, um, but with that, obviously, it's great to see, you know, the big news out of Australia um, this past week. And huge. Um, just, yeah, it, that it, it continues to reaffirm and, and be very inspiring for, you know, to, to see, a country, you know, especially one like Australia, recognize these medicines and the potential that they have, and and make such a, a large and significant step forward is is huge. Like, I, I think huge is an understatement, is it not? A hundred percent. And I think you know, again, like to talk about just the the significance of that change and the support, um, you know, is. is it's massive. And, and yeah. I think now, you know, for, for somebody who's maybe an investor looking at this space, it's a huge vote of confidence as well. And you, and you have to assume that other countries, you know, are, are, are looking at it very, very similarly. Um, yeah. you know, we, we have just, just to give you a sense, but we have Canadians even who pay to fly to Utah to go and do ketamine therapy in Utah. And if you start to see Canadians and Americans fly to Australia to potentially go and get that treatment, um, that that is going to be a huge, huge- uh, Eye opener signal. for a lot of government agencies, right? 100%, 100%. Yeah. And, and my, my, if I were to guess, uh, and I'm not always right when I guess, but uh, if I were to guess, um, I would, I would assume that regulatory bodies are probably wanting to get ahead of that. Hmm. Well, if you're hiding under a rock, let's talk a little bit about this announcement. Um, announced last week, uh, Permit Medicines in Aus the country of Australia, uh, Permit Medicines, both psilocybin and MDA to be prescribed by authorized psychiatrists for um, treatment, ter excuse me, treatment of certain mental health conditions. So first off, I want to exactly, so people understand, what exactly are those mental health conditions? So the big ones, the big two that they've highlighted are PTSD and um, depression. PTSD, obviously, with, with the MAPS data, depression with the COMPASS data. But I think, I, I don't think it should be under uh, scored or, or looked over that they have, you know, they've left it fairly broad in regard to mental health indications, which I think is very exciting. Um, and I think is is the right approach. I think, you know, they're they're... They're going to prioritize those that have the most amount of clinical data, um, mm -hmm. but you're continuing to see more and more indications open up. And, you know, with, especially in the U S um, you know, there's a lot of off label ketamine is a great example. There's lots of off label use of ketamine. Um, you know, depression is the one we have the most amount of data for, but even in our own clinics, we, we have protocols for, addiction, um, suicidality, depression, <clears throat> PTSD, um, and I think that's where this, the field of psychedelic therapy is really exciting is I think they're very effective for a number of different indications because ultimately they're helping address the underlying root cause of all of these different expressions of mental health, which is, which is trauma. Um, and, and that's where psychedelics continue to play this really important role around curative intent in regards to mental health indications. Do you see Australians um, that may be suffering from addiction, and this is more towards PSD and depression, um, taking part in this? And I'm not asking you to be a doctor and see whether it works or not, but ultimately, um, do you have to have, you know... Um, safety precautions when it comes to really understanding, like, you know, what this is treating 
versus maybe something else that somebody is suffering through? Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's going to be clinical protocols, training of practitioners, all of those things that are going to be very important and need to be set up. And I think, um, you know, I swear Numinous, frankly, has, has been focusing a lot of its efforts and where, you know, we've been fortunate enough to partner with MAPS and carry out these clinical trials for not only MDMA, but psilocybin as well. So we're very familiar and we've written protocols and have protocols as well as training in place. Um, and I think as we continue to move forward, um, the, the opportunities to, um, scale those to other groups that are looking to get set up. And I think, you know, where Australia is at at the moment, and, you know, to, to be transparent, um, I had a lot of long distance calls come in, uh, this, this weekend and, and into, into this week, um, because this is caught so many like this has really caught a lot of Australians off guard. Um, this is a big change in, in a very short period of time. Yeah. And, um, and so I think there's going to be looking for a lot of proven protocols, training, um, you know, how to run these within a clinical infrastructure, all of that stuff that's going to be necessary, um, to, to, you know, be put into place by, July 1st. So, so you're finding that a lot of people that are reaching out as far as the proper education, uh, training, they're reaching out to you versus other companies, correct? I don't know who else they're talking to. I only, I only know, I only know the calls that are coming to me, but, um, but again, I, I don't know of any other service providers who have worked with MDMA and psilocybin in clinic as, as extensively as we have. Well, to give you an idea, we're actually speaking with somebody uh, within the industry, co-founder of another company, uh, probably a week and a half ago, saying as many as 60,000 trained therapists are going to be needed yep. for this industry yep. within like the next year. Yep. 60,000. Yep. So you've talked about this in the past about having the proper training. Uh, now I understand to like what you mean by this now that we're actually, you know, you know, putting out certain numbers, but how does one begin with proper training to the point where they're certified? Like what is the timeline based off of that? And how do you get people to believe in the industry? Yeah, so so I, you know, I think the thing that's really exciting from a healthcare practitioner standpoint, like the, the amount of practitioners we have that reach out to us that are so excited about this big change that everybody sees is coming. Um, you haven't had any um, innovation in mental health care in 50 years since mm -hmm. the invention of mm -hmm. SSRIs. So, um, there's a huge amount of excitement on the practitioner side of things. I think in regards to like, what is the training pathway? Um, we, we very well flushed that out and you can go on our website. We have a lot of resources in regards to how that gets spelt out. Um, I think the, the one thing that will yet to be seen is a few, a few things factor into, you know, how do you become a psychedelic therapist? Um, especially in North America and in the U S that will be dependent on insurance coverage, um, and, and what ends up getting approved from a regulatory standpoint. But I think Australia might answer or at least give us a sense of what that might look like in pretty short order here. So that's one of the things that's exciting as well. Our hope is, um, you know, the, these therapies can get very expensive if it's all, yeah, psychologist time and, and things like that. And, and so we'll see what ends up happening in regards to which kinds of regulation are needed in order to be able to administer which kind of treatment. And that might also factor in, you know, in, in regards to how much insurance coverage you get or, or, you know, up in Canada, the universal healthcare system. I can't help but feel like I know trials take a certain period of time, but um, as we talked about the overall interest in fielding a lot more calls since last week's announcement, um, do you not believe that this industry will start to like progress a lot more rapidly uh, yeah. over the next year? I I think the next year is going to be. Um... And I don't want to get people misguided and I don't want to sound like, like I'm pumping anything, but yeah. You've talked about this for three years, and I was actually saying this in a LinkedIn post about how a lot of executives and CEOs we've spoken to have talked about how we're going to run into this issue post-COVID with a lot of mental health crisis. And like last week's announcement about how the uh, Liberal government in Canada wants to uh, delay the assisted dying bill because, you know, it's about expanding into another health regime, which basically in so many words means 
We don't have the proper trained therapists right now, but if we did, I'm sure that bill would be, you know, passed and approved. It gives you the sign of the times, but um, you see this industry better than anyone, um, which makes me believe on a lot of the feedback that you provided, why I do believe this industry will advance rapidly knowing the times we're in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so for sure. And, and I think, you know, you you've you've seen this tipping point from a regulatory perspective. You continue to see states make changes. You can like it, it. Just the overwhelming amount of need that is out there, the support that is there, the clinical trials. Frankly, you know that you could argue that based off of the data that we have right now with MDMA uh, and psilocybin, that it, that it's bordering on unethical for there not to be access. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I, and I think, you think government officials know this? Uh, I, I mean, you, if you look at what's happened, you know, health Canada has made significant changes in the last couple of years, obviously this Australia thing, you've seen <clears throat> States move to legalization. It's, it's been acknowledged by the white house. President Biden has put, you know, has, has openly stated that they intend on having MDMA and psilocybin legalized in the next two years for therapy. So I think for sure, I, I think the thing that they're waiting on, which is, you know, kind of typical of government is they're waiting for us to do the heavy lifting work of figuring out what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, then yeah. they'll be able to approve it and say what a good job that they did. Yeah. And that's fine. Cause that's, that's, that's what industry should be doing. Industry yeah. should be 100%. building best practices and, and building out the infrastructure necessary to be able to do this in a scalable and accessible way because yeah. you know regulators can go and approve something but if but if we haven't figured out you know how how to get that accessible by the clients that's not really regulators job um that's 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 the work that we should be doing based off the tga's decision which is the uh, regulatory agency of the australian government for department of health stands for therapeutic goods administration correct Sorry, say that again. TGA, does that stand for? Actually, I wrote it down. Therapeutic Goods Administration. Yes. Yeah. So it's equivalent to what the FDA is in Australia. Off of last week's announcement, does this nudge the FDA and others to accept, I guess, this therapy? Like, do we see timelines shortened and approval made quicker uh, than what people are anticipating? I think so. And I, and I think it opens up, you know, and again, another potential possibility in regards to, you know, a regulatory pathway. Um you know, Australia and Canada have very similar uh, government structures. I, I, as I said, I, I think Health Canada is probably looking at this extremely closely. Um, you believe you know, that? I think yeah. so. I think so. Um, and and if you look at you know the United States again, you've already got one state that's legalized psilocybin. You've got another one in Colorado that is has announced the same. Um, I think the pressure that's going to be on the the Fed is going to be massive, um, and and I think that might drive a lot of change. Um, and and again, I think from an industry standpoint, that means models like what Numinous is creating are going to be even more imperative because if if there's a circumventing of clinical trials or drug development, any of those kinds of things, you're left with a massive uh, gap in regards to how does someone get safe, accessible access to therapy um, now? And and the, there's just so much work that needs to be done there. Um, so you're saying a lot of the focus, I would say, in the early stages of this industry was about drug development. And now we kind of pivoted to clinical uh, model. But then yeah. now kind of the third approach is the trained assisted therapy portion, as we said, with, you know, as many as... 60,000 therapists. So for those that are actually seeing and hearing your story for the first time, you talked about the benefits of your company pertaining to that. Walk them through on how you plan to uh, not take advantage, but, um, you know, grow and have a tremendous opportunity in front of you uh, once we see more and more approval made by different countries. Yeah, I think training is a huge one. Um, but also, you know, the, the work that we've done over the last couple of years of, we've now worked with 
you know, ketamine significantly, obviously, um, but also we've ran psilocybin, LSD, and MDMA clinical trials through our clinical infrastructure. And we've built SOP training protocols, training manuals, training programs, um, and and all of the the necessary necessary clinical infrastructure, back end clinical infrastructure, to be able to actually administer this at scale, um, with with real world evidence attached to it. All the right. other, you know, whether you're a drug developer, and I, and I think drug development work is is still very important, but they haven't actually run these on the ground like mm-hmm. we have. And and if I was a if I was someone looking to get into this space, um, I would want to be able to rely on someone who's got been there, done that experience of running this in a clinic within a, a, a business that is sustainable. If I'm a if I'm a healthcare practitioner looking to open a clinic or um, or or administer the therapy, um, that there is a you know they've got to understand what this means for them at the end of the day too. I know you can't comment on this, but one would think that, and I asked this question with other CEOs in other industries, if you're the hunted or hunter when it comes to acquisition, and we talk about, you know, um, a lot of companies that are cashed up well are in acquisition mode. Um, Do you look at yourselves as acquiring more and more assets? Or or for that matter, I guess the question I never really asked you, like, you probably are fielding some calls, uh, whether that's true or not. But it's, it's, um, I would think with the model that's in play, and the conversation that we're having pertaining to uh, your model pertaining to the, the proper training and, and therapy. Um, this is going to be a top of mind uh, priority for a lot of these companies in drug development, I would think, because, you know, the opportunity is like now. Yeah, maybe. And I'm I'll, not, like yeah, I said, I'll, I'll, I, I, I'm not going over this, but one would think that there's a lot of interest pertaining to a company like yours that specifically is, you know, uh, focusing a lot of their time and effort based off of this. Of uh, yeah, I'll frame it maybe a, a little bit. Of, you know, we've done a bunch of acquisitions, and so you know what I always look for in regards to an acquisition is uh, experience, uh, demonstration of ability to execute and operate, and financial health and stability. And mm-hmm. if I think about numinous. You know, the last five years, I think we've really figured out the model um, from a financial standpoint, and that was demonstrated in our last financials. Um, you know, path a very, very clear path to profitability that's been demonstrated uh, much better than anybody else in the space, frankly, from a service provider standpoint. Um, if I think about experience, partnered with MAPS and, and a lot of the other drug developers in the space, we've helped make regulation changes in Canada. Um, we're extremely familiar with these protocols, um, and we've done a lot of the necessary heavy lifting. And now, at a time where you know the 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 light, call it at the end of the tunnel in regards to regulation change, while it's not crystal clear, it, it's certainly a heck of a mm-hmm. lot clearer than it has been. Um, I and, think that's the big thing I take away. Yeah, and I think if I was an acquirer. Um, and I was looking to place a bet or, or place a bet's the wrong term, but if I was looking to, um, make an investment, uh, in where I see, you know, the future coming kind of now, uh, I think we've checked a lot of those boxes. Mm. What'd you think of the interview on Fox business news pertaining to a good friend of yours and someone you have business relations with, uh, Rick Doblin, the executive director over at maps commenting about how he thinks MDMA is going to be uh, approved Q2024, Q2 2024. Um, you obviously agree with a lot of what he's saying. Yeah. Uh, do you think based off of last week's announcement, this could happen sooner? You know, I, I would never, uh, I would never accuse Rick of being conservative, but, uh, but I would, I, I think he was maybe being conservative, frankly, in that call. Um, wow. I think, you know, they've got, they're going to read out their results from the phase three B they're going to, a journal, I'm not sure which one will, will do the readout of the phase three B results. Um, When does that happen again? March? Should be March uh, is when they were anticipating. And, um, you know, they've already, I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said in the public domain, but they've already put out a release saying, you know, those, they're very much in line with the phase three A results, which are going to be 
that that is going to be wow. such a reaffirming moment for the space that I could I could see that so you've got a lot of pressure. Yeah. You've got Australia. You say you've got Canada looking at this closely. If you've got compelling data, like we could see a number of G7 countries possibly approve like psilocybin MDMA, you're thinking, uh, before we're even done by the end of the calendar year. I think so. Yeah. Wow. That's big. Real mm-hmm. big. Last thing I want to touch on, recent news made by your company last week. You received approval from Health Canada to treat an uh, experiential training study that will test the safety and clinical efficacy of whole psilocybin. Am I pronouncing this re- uh, correctly? Cubensis is that Cronex T? Cubensis. Cubensis T for therapeutic use. And apologies for the mispronunciation, but <laughs> uh, straight up question: As I'm learning more about the space, explain further the significance of the uh, of it all the, uh, pertaining to the announcement. Yeah, um, not your grandmother's tea, um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, as as we were talking about this training piece is 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 extremely necessary. And one of the things that Rick and I, uh, have always been very close on is, is the need for experiential training. And so for people who don't understand what experiential training is, it's, it's training, getting actual real world experience with the compound and the protocol. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to get in a plane with anybody that hasn't flown a plane before. And similarly with these treatments, uh, we believe it's extremely me- necessary and, and maps has talked a lot about this too. Mm-hmm. It's extremely necessary to have experiential training. Um, I just don't think enough people understand it because it's a brand new industry as we start to mature. But now it, we see this, it's like, I've read stories about, and I don't want people to get the wrong direction, but if you go down the wrong road, it's like you need the proper training to avoid someone yeah. being in a worse mental situation uh prior to even the uh uh therapy even happening correct you have to have experiential experience there's there's so many nuances and things like that that happen in these experiences that you have to be able to hold and create space for that you just you you can't learn about it in a textbook um you you have to have that experiential experience and um and so that's that's what we've been big advocates mm-hmm. for. And, and this trial kind of achieves a couple of things for us. One is it allows us to start doing that experiential training work now. And two, it allows us to get a product that we've created to be a part of that trial also mm-hmm. with, with the T. So hmm. yeah. lots of interesting stuff happening, though. Um, I didn't think stuff like this would happen this fast pertaining to the industry uh, mm-hmm. this calendar year. But it's just been one thing after another. And last week's announcement was, you know, outside of the whole business opportunity and all that stuff, it's just incredible to see that, you know, maybe we are onto something and the world is not as crazy as it seems as we're starting to change and obviously uh, give people what they need most importantly. And I know that's kind of like the soft sentiment side, but ultimately at the end of the day, that's what the whole industry is based off of is people getting more opportunities and options for their mental health. Yeah, no, a- absolutely. And, and, you know, there's a lot, you, you hear criticism about, you know, things not moving fast enough or, mm-hmm. um, I have not seen, you know, the amount of change you've seen in a short period of time during a pandemic. Um, it, Think it, of the it, first conversations you and I had to where we are today. It's absolutely incredible. Um, incredible. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Luminous is, is fortunate enough to play a role in that and frankly, you know, stand on the shoulders of, of giants like MAPS and, and the huge amount of work, you know, that they've been doing for over 35 years now, the, the countless amounts of people who have been, you know, really doing this work um, in, in, you know, with a huge amount of resistance for a very, very long time. And, uh, you know, the, the small five years that we've been able to be involved comparative to that, um, it, it's just, it's a huge, huge moment for, um, for not only this space, but just for, for people looking for access. And mm-hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a very exciting time. Well, listen, best of luck. Always learn a lot from you, but uh, encouraging news to say the least. But please, let's keep in touch. And uh, obviously, I hope our viewers love this interview. If you have any comments, any questions you want to ask Peyton, let us know. We'll reach out. 
He's a great thought leader, always here for you, always wants to educate you in the right direction, and uh, we'll get you that information. But anyways, appreciate the time. Likewise. Good to see All you. Right. Thanks, Peyton. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about the emerging industries that we cover, then leave a comment below and let us know who you want us to interview, the questions you want asked, and the information that you want to learn. We want to hear from you. As usual, click on that bell for all notifications to get the latest information. Share this video with your network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.